According to Bloomberg, Republican frontrunner Donald Trump said he would block Nippon Steel Corp's deal to buy United States Steel Corp. if he wins the November election, highlighting how the former president's economic nationalism could imperil foreign investment in the U.S. I would block it instantaneously. Absolutely, Trump said Wednesday after meeting with the members of the Teamsters Union in Washington. According to Bloomberg, China stocks gained on an official signaled potential spending plans, while shares in other Asian markets fell after disappointing U.S. earnings reports and Federal Reserve pushback on interest rate cut expectations. China's CSI 300 swung to gains after a four-day slump, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index advanced after a two-day decline. The Kaixin Manufacturing PMI gauge came in as expected, in expansion territory, and an official in Beijing said the government would set a reasonable size for investment. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. commercial real estate market has been in turmoil since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. But New York Community Bancorp delivered a reminder that some lenders are only just beginning to see the pain. The bank's decisions to slash its dividend and stockpile reserves sent its stock down a record 38% and dragged the KBW Regional Banking Index to its worst day since the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank last March. Japanese lender Aozora Bank Limited added to the property jitters by warning of a loss tied to investments in U.S. commercial real estate, sending shares plunging in Asia trading. According to Bloomberg, Adidas AG said its profit this year will be hit by unfavorable currency movements, but it plans to mitigate some of the damage by continuing to sell leftover inventory from its defunct Yeezy partnership with the rapper Yi. The company expects to generate an operating profit of around 500 million euros in 2024, according to a statement Wednesday. That's below the average analyst estimate of 1.27 billion euros. According to Bloomberg, Jerome Powell delivered a clear message to traders eager for the central bank to start slashing interest rates, not so fast. The Federal Reserve Chair, and the post-meeting statement from policymakers, showed confidence that the central bank is on the verge of vanquishing the post-pandemic inflation surge, lending support to speculation it will cut rates significantly later this year. According to Yahoo Finance, a decision by a Delaware judge to throw out Elon Musk's $56 billion Tesla pay package is a threat to the wealth of the world's richest man. It also could alter the way CEO compensation is decided at companies across America. It's a big deal, said Cornell University visiting lecturer Brian Dunn, who noted this was the first case ever to overturn a board's decision on compensation. According to Reuters, Dazed share markets were trying to steady on Thursday as Chinese stocks eked out rare gains and investors stuck to bets for sizable cuts in U.S. interest rates even if the kickoff date might now be a little later than first hoped. Europe's bourses started in the red as traders hoped eurozone inflation data and a Bank of England interest rate decision due later would divert attention from what had been Wall Street's worst route since September on Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, Oil was steady after the biggest decline in three weeks on Wednesday as investors weighed the risks from any U.S. retaliation to a deadly attack in Jordan against signs of robust American supply. West Texas Intermediate traded near $76 a barrel after losing 2.5% in the previous session, the biggest drop since early January. Brent crude was little changed below $81. Data showing expanding U.S. crude stockpiles and rising oil output put downward pressure on prices on Wednesday. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures rose on Thursday, following a Wall Street sell-off in the previous session as the Federal Reserve dashed hopes for early interest rate cuts, with the focus moving to economic data and big tech earnings scheduled for later in the day. The SP500 and the tech-laden Nasdaq on Wednesday notched their biggest one-day percentage declines since September and October, respectively, while the Dow saw its steepest decline in six weeks. According to Reuters, Canada's Rogers Communications topped Wall Street expectations for quarterly wireless subscriber additions on Thursday, as a growing population and immigrants entering the country drove up demand for its services. Canada has been seeing a steady rise in immigration as it welcomes more people in a bid to grow its population and boost economy, driving demand for wireless companies' plans aimed at newcomers. According to Reuters, British government bond yields rose, 
The pound cut some of its earlier losses, and UK shares paired gains on Thursday after the Bank of England held rates steady and said it wanted more evidence inflation would return to target before cutting rates. The pound was last down 0.2% against the dollar at $1.2663, compared with $1.2635 before the decision. It was at 85.38 per euro, versus 85.58 pence before the decision. According to Reuters, biotechnology company Kyverna Therapeutics said on Thursday it was aiming for a market valuation of up to $711 million in its U.S. initial public offering. The company, backed by names such as Bain Capital Life Sciences Opportunities and Gilead Sciences, plans to raise up to $211.3 million by selling about 11 million shares priced between $17 and $19 each. According to Reuters, Major central banks stood pat on interest rates in January, as the much-anticipated change of course in the global monetary policy draws closer while emerging market peers plowed on with rate cuts. January saw five of the central banks overseeing the ten most heavily traded currencies, the U.S. Federal Reserve, the ECB, the Bank of Japan, Bank of Canada and Norga's Bank, hold rate-setting meetings with none-changing rates. That follows on from eight meetings in December where only Norway hiked. According to Reuters, Becton Dickinson beat first quarter profit estimates and raised its full year earnings forecast on Thursday as it benefits from strong demand for its surgical equipment. While some companies such as Johnson Johnson and Boston Scientific have benefited from people, especially older patients, undergoing surgeries they had delayed due to the pandemic, the likes of Danaher and Thermo Fisher Scientific have forecast a weak 2024 due to low demand in their key market, China. According to Reuters, Honeywell International Inc. on Thursday forecast a weak first quarter after missing on sales estimates for the last three months of 2023, due to lower demand in its businesses that offer building technologies and cater to warehouses. Shares of the diversified industrial firm, also a major aerospace supplier, fell 2.6% to $197.01 before the bell. According to Reuters, Job cut announcements in January increased to its highest level in 10 months as employers in the financial and technology sectors launched restructuring efforts, a report released Thursday showed. Announced layoffs reached 82,307 in January, a 136% surge from December's 34,817, according to data released by outplacement firm Challenger, Gray Christmas, which helps companies with the offboarding process for employees. It was the highest monthly total since March 2023. According to Reuters, the Bank of England kept interest rates at a nearly 16-year high on Thursday but softened its stance about when it might cut them and one of its policymakers cast the first vote for a reduction in borrowing costs since 2020. The Bose Monetary Policy Committee split three ways on the right course for policy and ditched its warning that rates could rise again, instead saying borrowing costs would be kept under review. According to Reuters, small, loosely regulated lenders in Canada who rode a pandemic housing boom to offer mortgages at high interest rates are now showing signs of stress as a spike in living costs pushes some homeowners toward a default. Canada's C$2 trillion mortgage market is dominated by the Big Six, major banks that include Royal Bank of Canada and TD Bank. According to Reuters, Argentina raised prices for biodiesel and bioethanol, made from corn and sugarcane which are mandatory for mixing with gasoline in the South American country, two resolutions published in the official Gazette showed on Thursday. The Economy Ministry's Energy Department set the price of biodiesel for mandatory blending with diesel oil at 940.334 pesos per liter, up from the 923.590 pesos. According to Reuters, pharmaceutical firm Abbott India reported a 26% rise in third-quarter profit on Thursday as higher sales outpaced the impact of a pricing cap on certain medicines. The company, which makes popular antacid medicine Diagene, said its profit rose to 3.11 billion rupees from 2.47 billion rupees a year earlier. According to Reuters, global passive equity funds' net assets surpassed those of their active counterparts for the first time in 2023 as investors increasingly sought lower-cost funds that mirror broad market indices. According to LSEG Lipper, 
global passive equity funds' net assets stood at a record $15.1 trillion at the end of December while those of active funds was $14.3 trillion. According to Reuters, Neuralink rival Synchron said on Thursday it has acquired an equity stake in medical component maker Aquandas, as it looks to improve manufacturing operations of its brain implant. New York-based Synchron is farther along in the process of developing a brain implant than Elon Musk's Neuralink. On Monday, Musk said the first human patient had received an implant from Neuralink. According to Reuters, U.S. electric and gas utility CMS Energy on Thursday raised its full-year profit forecast after posting an 82% rise in quarterly income, as lower expenses helped offset the impact of unfavorable weather conditions. The company's operating expenses fell to $1.5 billion in the fourth quarter, compared with $2 billion reported a year earlier. According to Reuters, Biotechni missed second-quarter earnings estimates on Thursday, hurt by persistently weak demand for its products used in the development of drugs and therapies, especially in key market China. The life sciences company had missed revenue and profit estimates in the previous two quarters as well, as higher interest rates led to reduced research and drug development funding for smaller biotech clients, impacting demand in China. According to Bloomberg, a number of hedge fund managers are betting that copper stocks are significantly undervalued, as they position themselves for gains this year. Funds including Tribeca Investment Partners, Terra Capital and Anaconda Invest all say the supply dynamics support price increases in 2024. According to Reuters, beyond its anti-immigrant stance, Germany's far-right alternative for Germany has an economic platform that would see Germany leave the European Union as it is today and return to a more limited European system of cooperation. Here is what is known about the economic policies proposed by the party and how they are seen by mainstream economists. According to Reuters, the Biden administration is sending drugmakers opening offers for the U.S. Medicare program's first-ever price negotiations on Thursday, the White House said in a statement. President Joe Biden's Signature Inflation Reduction Act allows Medicare, which covers 66 million Americans mostly aged 65 and older, to negotiate prices for some of its most costly drugs. According to Reuters, the second-hand market for airplanes is booming due to a chronic shortage that has persisted since the pandemic, and fears are growing that Boeing's latest crisis could tighten the squeeze in coming months. The industry is already some 3,000 planes short of what it planned pre-COVID due to pandemic disruption and other bottlenecks at Boeing and Airbus, leasing firm Avalon says. According to Reuters, Germany plans to oppose a draft European Union law which would require large companies to take action if they find their supply chains employing child labor or damaging the environment, according to a letter from two ministers seen by Reuters. The landmark EU law, agreed by the bloc's lawmakers and Council of Member States in December, is due to be formally signed off as soon as next week and could see companies face fines of up to 5% of global sales for breaching the rules. According to Reuters, U.S. worker productivity grew faster than expected in the fourth quarter, keeping unit labor costs contained and giving the Federal Reserve another boost in the fight against inflation. Non-farm productivity, which measures hourly output per worker, increased at a 3.2 percent annualized rate last quarter, the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics said on Thursday. According to Reuters, Marlboro maker Altria edged past fourth-quarter adjusted profit expectations on Thursday as higher prices and a shift to alternative nicotine products helped cushion the blow from sluggish demand for traditional tobacco products. Globally, tobacco companies are grappling with stricter regulation, competition from alternatives like vapes and greater awareness of the health risks of their core products. According to Reuters, major central banks are now signaling that interest rates will likely move lower in coming months as inflation weakens, calling time on what of what has been the most aggressive tightening cycle in decades. The United States, UK and Sweden all left rates steady this week, with the US Federal Reserve saying it sees lower rates on the horizon. According to Reuters, share markets were in recovery mode on Thursday as investors stuck to bets for sizable cuts in US and European interest rates even if the kickoff dates might now be a little later than first hoped. A rare three-way split at the Bank of England had bamboozled Europe's traders but with Wall Street pointing higher after its biggest falls since September ahead of crucial Apple, 
Amazon and Meta results it was all still to play for. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden will visit autoworkers in Michigan on Thursday, where he is likely to face protests over his handling of the war in Gaza, after several leaders of the state's Arab-American community declined to meet his campaign team last week. Biden's travel to the election battleground state was intended as a celebration after the United Auto Workers Union recently endorsed his re-election bid. But his trip may be overshadowed by opposition from the state's Arab-American and Muslim population, which is upset the president has not called for a ceasefire in the Israel-Gaza conflict. According to Reuters, Tesla will hold a shareholder vote to transfer its state of incorporation to Texas from Delaware, CEO Elon Musk said on Thursday days after a judge invalidated his $56 billion pay package at the electric vehicle maker. On Tuesday, Delaware Judge Kathleen McCormick called the 2018 share-based pay package, the largest in corporate America, an unfathomable sum, that was unfair to shareholders and found it was negotiated by directors who appeared beholden to Musk. According to Reuters, Barclays plc is sounding out private equity firms about taking a majority stake in its UK merchant payments business, after overtures to trade buyers yielded muted interest, three people familiar with the matter said. The bank has been making a number of strategic shifts as chief executive CS Venkatakrishnan seeks to turn around its performance, including trying to bring in a partner with additional industry, know-how, to expand the UK payments unit, as well as put in extra capital, Reuters reported in September. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of England opened the door to interest rate reductions, slashing its outlook for inflation this year and dropping its guidance that borrowing costs may have to rise again. The UK Central Bank's nine-member Monetary Policy Committee split three ways on how to act, with a majority of six opting to leave the key rate unchanged at 5.25%. Swati Dingra pushed to cut rates, the first vote for a reduction since the start of the pandemic almost four years ago. Two others wanted a rate hike. According to Reuters, Royal Caribbean Group projected annual profit above Wall Street expectations on Thursday on strong demand for cruise vacations and steeper itinerary prices. With travelers opting for cruises instead of more expensive land-based vacation options, operators are experiencing record levels of bookings compared to pre-pandemic levels, giving them enough room to mark up ticket prices. According to Reuters, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador said on Thursday he expects the local unit of carmaker Audi and its union to soon reach an agreement on a new contract that can end a recently launched worker strike. There is not long to go, and I'm optimistic, López Obrador told a regular government press conference. According to Reuters, Tata Group is in advanced talks with Taiwan's Pegatron to form a partnership to run an iPhone assembly plant the Indian company is building in the southern state of Tamil Nadu, two sources with direct knowledge of the matter said on Thursday. Tata is building the iPhone assembly plant in Hosur City, which will be its second such facility in the country. The move comes as Apple and its contract manufacturers are rapidly expanding their India operations. According to Reuters, European Union leaders stressed an urgent need to accelerate the delivery of ammunition and missiles to Ukraine on Thursday after unanimously agreeing to extend 50 billion euros in new aid to Kyiv. According to Reuters, Sirius XM forecast full-year revenue below analysts' estimates on Thursday as the satellite radio company deals with an uncertain advertising market and stiff competition. The company launched its new streaming app with a rebranded logo late last year as it looks to add subscribers amid competition from Spotify and Alphabet's YouTube. According to Reuters, shares in Ferrari hit fresh record highs on Thursday, driving the luxury sports car maker's market value closer to the $100 billion mark after the Italian group predicted strong orders would deliver more growth. Chief Executive Bendetto Vigna said the exceptional visibility in the company's order book would allow it to look at the high end of 2026 targets with stronger confidence. Ferrari also forecast growth in revenues and earnings this year, reassuring investors who feared a conservative outlook. According to Bloomberg, Okta Inc., a software company known for login and identity services, is cutting 7% of its staff to reduce costs, adding to a list of other tech firms that have been doing the same this year. The reductions will impact about 400 employees, Chief Executive Officer Todd McKinnon wrote in an email to staff on Thursday.
We need to be mindful of our overall spend so we can continue to invest in the areas, products and routes to market with the most opportunity, he said. According to Reuters, U.S. manufacturing stabilized in January amid a rebound in new orders, but inflation at the factory gate picked up. The Institute for Supply Management said on Thursday that its manufacturing PMI increased to 49.1 last month from a slightly downwardly revised 47.1 in December. It was the 15th straight month that the PMI stayed below 50, which indicates contraction in manufacturing. That is the longest such stretch since the period from August 2000 to January 2002. According to Bloomberg, Universal Music Group NV, the world's biggest record label, has begun pulling its artists' music from TikTok after contract negotiations between the two companies failed to result in a new licensing agreement. Videos featuring UMG-owned songs will be muted, and users will have the option to choose a new song to soundtrack their content. That means TikTok users, of which there are more than 1 billion, will have to find alternatives to songs from acts like Taylor Swift, Drake and Bob Dylan. According to Reuters, Eurozone sovereign bond yields paired their gains on Thursday as U.S. economic data partly offset the impact of sticky service inflation in the euro area and Federal Reserve remarks that dashed expectations of quick monetary easing. U.S. worker productivity grew faster than expected in the fourth quarter, keeping unit labor costs contained and helping the Fed in its fight against inflation. According to Bloomberg, Austria exported more energy than it consumed for the first time in two decades, with steady natural gas flows from Russia and lower power consumption giving a boost to state-owned companies. The data underscores the uneven impact of the energy crisis triggered by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Even as electricity and gas price shocks forced consumers to reduce consumption, companies including OMV AG and Verbund AG profited by exporting more energy to Austria's neighbors. According to Bloomberg, Peloton Interactive Inc. expects to record another sales decline in the current quarter, defying Wall Street predictions for a return to growth, after some of its comeback efforts failed to pan out. The fitness technology company projected revenue of $700 million to $725 million during its fiscal third quarter, well short of the $755.6 million that analysts anticipated on average. That will mark a decline from about $749 million in the year earlier period. According to Reuters, tracking how big tech is moving into the European Union's financial services sector is challenging, but it currently does not pose a threat to financial stability, the bloc's financial watchdogs said on Thursday. The EU's banking, insurance and securities regulators jointly mapped out the presence of big tech moves into financial services, which have raised concerns given their reach, troves of data, and deep pockets. According to Reuters, U.S. worker productivity grew faster than expected in the fourth quarter, keeping unit labor costs contained and giving the Federal Reserve another boost in the fight against inflation. Labor market momentum is also fading, though gradually, which could further help to curb wage inflation. First-time applications for unemployment benefits rose to a two-month high last week, other data from the Labor Department showed on Thursday. The number of people on unemployment rolls was also the highest in two months. According to Reuters, Human Rights Watch on Thursday urged automakers such as Tesla, Volkswagen and BYD that produce cars in China to do more to ensure materials that could be made using Uyghur forced labor do not enter their supply chain. The rights group said in a report that it had found evidence that Xinjiang aluminum producers had employed workers from Chinese government-backed labor transfer programs, which it accuses of coercing Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims into jobs in Xinjiang and other regions. According to Bloomberg, the pound looks poised to extend its peer-beating performance this year after the Bank of England struck a less dovish tone than the market expected on Thursday. While the bow held interest rates unchanged, the central bank revised higher its expectations for inflation in the coming two years and two policymakers voted for a rate hike. The more neutral bias saw the pound trim a daily decline, and strategists at Bank of America to money managers at Aviva Investors say that stance should support the UK currency going forward. According to Reuters, the United States has approved plans for multi-day strikes in Iraq and Syria against multiple targets, including Iranian personnel and facilities, CBS News reported on Thursday, citing U.S. officials.
President Joe Biden said on Tuesday he had made up his mind on how to respond to a drone attack in northeastern Jordan near the Syrian border this week that killed three U.S. service members and wounded more than 40. The U.S. blamed the drone attack on Iran-backed militants. According to Reuters, U.S. construction spending increased more than expected in December amid a surge in single-family homebuilding, and further gains are likely as mortgage rates decline. The Commerce Department said on Thursday that construction spending rose 0.9 percent. Data for November was revised higher to show construction spending advancing 0.9 percent instead of 0.4 percent as previously reported. Economists polled by Reuters had forecast construction spending gaining 0.5 percent. According to Reuters, Wall Street rose on Thursday after a sell-off in the previous session as the U.S. Federal Reserve dashed hopes for early interest rate cuts, with focus moving to big tech earnings due later in the day. The SP500 and the tech-laden Nasdaq on Wednesday notched their biggest one-day percentage declines since September and October, respectively, while the Dow saw its steepest decline in six weeks. According to Reuters, cryptocurrency firm Polygon Labs plans to cut 60 jobs globally, are about 19% of its workforce, the company said in a blog post on Thursday, marking a second round of layoffs amid a nascent recovery in digital assets. The company, which helps make digital coin Ethereum more accessible, let go 100 employees in February last year, following an industry-wide route that wiped away trillions of dollars. According to Reuters, Canadian manufacturing activity declined for a ninth straight month in January but there was a slowdown in the pace of contraction as inflation pressures eased and firms grew more confident about the outlook, data showed on Thursday. The SP Global Canada Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index rose to a seasonally adjusted 48.3 in January after slumping to 45.4 in December, its lowest level since May 2020. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock index rose on Thursday boosted by materials stocks, while investors repriced their expectations of the first rate cut to May by the U.S. Federal Reserve. At 10.07 a.m. Eastern Time, the Toronto Stock Exchange's SP-TSX Composite Index was up 102.28 points, or 0.49%, at 21,124.16. According to Reuters, a strong recovery by European banks faces a possible setback after BNP Paribas and Ing warned on Thursday of a more challenging outlook and investors reappraised which lenders are most vulnerable as a boost from higher interest rates recedes. Shares in BNPP, which missed forecasts and pushed back a key profitability target, slid 8% in their biggest one-day drop since March, while Dutch bank Ing's stock fell sharply as it forecast lower income for 2024. According to Reuters, Rail company Canadian Pacific Kansas City has proposed passenger train service from Mexico City to the U.S. border and will present a study for the proposed route in May, Mexico's president told reporters on Thursday. President Andres Manuel López Obrador stressed during his regular morning press conference that his government seeks the dual use of rail lines previously used only for cargo transport. According to Reuters, a federal appeals court on Thursday dismissed an appeal by investors who accused 10 of the world's largest banks of antitrust violations for conspiring to suppress competition in the now $26 trillion market for U.S. Treasury securities. In a 3-0 decision, the second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Manhattan said the 18 plaintiffs, including pension and retirement funds, did not plausibly allege that the banks violated the Sherman antitrust law by conspiring to rig treasury auctions, or to boycott newer platforms for trading treasuries. According to Reuters, Elliott Investment Management reached a settlement with online marketplace Etsy that hands a board seat to the activist investment firm, the two sides said on Thursday. Elliott, one of the world's most prominent investors, has a 13% economic stake, including both common shares and swaps, a person familiar with the matter said, declining to be named because the discussions are private. That makes Elliott the biggest investor in Etsy. According to Reuters, a meeting that was scheduled to happen between Brazil's government, local airlines and state-run oil firm Petrobras on Thursday has been cancelled, Mines and Energy Minister Alexander Silveira said. The meeting was part of efforts by the Brazilian government to make air travel more affordable and would involve Petrobras as the company sells jet fuel, whose prices carriers say are excessively high in Brazil.
According to Yahoo Finance, Amazon is scheduled to post quarterly earnings after the bell on Thursday, joining two fellow trillion-dollar giants and rounding out a week defined by high expectations and disappointment over tech results. Amazon's turn at big tech's wave of reports will likely offer updates on AI development and its lucrative cloud business. Investors will be looking for details about the growth of Amazon Web Services, in addition to insight into the company's burgeoning ads operations. Earlier this week Amazon's streaming service, Prime Video, began playing ads alongside movies and shows as the default option for users, who can pay extra for an ad-free version. Analysts have noted the significant potential for ad growth given the massive scale of Amazon's built-in audience. According to Yahoo Finance, a lot is up for debate this week on Capitol Hill as immigration negotiations intensify, but one thing is clear about any deal, it's not likely to help businesses much. What many in the business world want are changes to make it easier for companies to fill workers' shortages with immigrants, such as an increase in the number of H-1B visas. But unlike in previous talks, that issue doesn't even appear to be on the table this time around. According to Reuters, Facebook owner Meta Platforms plans to deploy into its data centers this year a new version of a custom chip aimed at supporting its artificial intelligence push, according to an internal company document seen by Reuters on Thursday. The chip, a second generation of an in-house silicon line Meta announced last year, could help to reduce Meta's dependence on the NVIDIA chips that dominate the market and control the spiraling costs associated with running AI workloads as it races to launch AI products. According to Bloomberg, New York Community Bancorp sank for a second straight day as at least five Wall Street analysts downgraded their recommendations and Moody's Investor Service put the bank's credit rating on review for downgrade. Shares tumbled as much as 15% on Thursday, hitting their lowest level since 2000, adding to Wednesday's record 38% plunge. Analysts including Compass Point Research and RBC Capital Markets downgraded their recommendations on NYCB to hold equivalent ratings in addition to cuts made by Raymond James, Jefferies and CFRA. According to Reuters, Eurozone sovereign bond yields eased on Thursday after U.S. economic data partly offset the impact of sticky service inflation in the euro area and Federal Reserve remarks that dashed expectations of quick monetary easing. U.S. worker productivity grew faster than expected in the fourth quarter, keeping unit labor costs contained and helping the Fed in its fight against inflation. According to Yahoo Finance, investors won't be expecting fireworks when ExxonMobil and Chevron report fourth-quarter earnings on Friday, the first of the U.S. oil majors. New data from FactSet shows that out of all 11 SP500 sectors, Energy is expected to see the largest year-over-year -year earnings decline for Q4 2023, down by 31.4%, compared to the benchmark's expected earnings growth rate of 1.5%. According to Yahoo Finance, the media and entertainment industry's reckoning will continue in 2024 with more layoffs as rising costs and debt-ridden balance sheets continue to weigh on the embattled sector. Partly in an attempt to appease Wall Street, these companies over the past year have slashed billions of dollars worth of costs. In addition, under profit pressure, they rolled out ad-supported tiers, bundled their offerings, and raised the monthly prices of subscription plans. According to Yahoo Finance, in a new analysis, three economists at Moody's Analytics took a deep dive on the coming election season. Their conclusion. President Joe Biden has a slight advantage at the moment both on the economy and on his overall chances of being re-elected. But it's a tenuous edge at best. According to Reuters, a Russian court on Thursday said it had fined U.S. e-commerce giant Amazon 2 million rubles for failing to remove what it said was illegal content. Russia also fined the company more than 200 million rubles on January 17 for not having a physical presence in the country and 4 million rubles in October also for failing to remove banned content. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. five-year yield fell to 3.77 percent, the lowest level since June, as bond traders priced in a more rapid pace of Federal Reserve interest rate cuts. The five-year Treasury yield fell as much as seven basis points to 3.77 percent. At the same time, traders priced in a slightly larger total amount of Fed interest rate cuts this year, even as the odds of a March start have crumbled. According to Reuters, Amer Sports, 
the maker of the world-renowned Wilson tennis rackets, was on track to return to public markets in a tepid debut on Thursday after selling shares at a discounted price in its U.S. IPO for a valuation of $6.3 billion. After a two-year dry spell, initial public offerings in the United States are expected to rebound in 2024 on firming bets of a soft landing for the U.S. economy. But the recovery has been uneven so far. According to Reuters, Corteva's shares jumped 16% on Thursday, after the U.S. agricultural chemical firm topped Wall Street expectations for fourth-quarter profit backed by strong seed prices. The seed maker reported operating profit of 15 cents per share for the quarter ended December 31 on Wednesday, beating analysts' estimate of 6 cents per share, according to LSEG data, while its net sales were also above expectations. According to Reuters, Elon Musk suffered one of the biggest legal losses in U.S. history this week when the Tesla CEO was stripped of his $56 billion pay package in a case brought by an unlikely opponent, a former heavy metal drummer. Richard Tornetta sued Musk in 2018, when the Pennsylvania resident held just nine shares of Tesla. The case eventually made its way to trial in late 2022 and on Tuesday a judge sided with Tornetta, voiding the enormous pay deal for being unfair to him and all his fellow Tesla shareholders. According to Yahoo Finance, declines in the U.S. manufacturing sector appear to have bottomed in a positive sign for the economy. On Thursday, the January ISM Manufacturing PMI Index registered a reading of 49.1%, up from 47.1% in the month prior and above Wall Street's estimates for a reading of 47.2. While that's lower than the reading of 50 needed to signal expansion in the sector, the reading was the strongest since October 2022. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields fell further and a gauge of global equity markets tried to rebound on Thursday as investors took the long view that interest cuts by the Federal Reserve and other central banks were still coming, though not as quickly as expected. Investors bid up bond prices, which move inversely to their yield, after Fed Chair Jerome Powell on Wednesday pushed back on market speculation that rates would be cut in March, sparking a sell-off on Wall Street and a dollar rally. According to Yahoo Finance, fresh off of testifying before the Senate that his social media empire doesn't hurt kids, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg will now face shareholders as his company reports its fourth quarter earnings after the bell on Thursday. Meta has been on a hot streak over the last 12 months, with shares rocketing 121% as of Thursday morning. In January, the company's market capitalization once again eclipsed the $1 trillion mark. We're only a month into 2024 but so far Meta's stock has outperformed the likes of Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. According to Yahoo Finance, it's official, streaming's password-sharing crackdown will hit Hulu users next. Disney, which fully owns the platform after purchasing Comcast's minority stake late last year, announced updates to its Hulu subscriber agreements and added additional terms on its sharing policies. The changes will go into effect on March 14. According to Bloomberg, Elliott Investment Management named three new partners in a rare expansion of the top ranks at the activist investment firm founded by billionaire Paul Singer. The firm recently announced in a letter to investors that it appointed Nabil Banji, Jason Genrick and Mark Steinberg as partners, according to people with knowledge of the matter, who asked not to be identified discussing private information. According to Reuters, the shakeout in the global electric vehicle industry is picking up speed. Chinese automaker Geely's move on Thursday to take over funding of struggling EV maker Polestar from Volvo Cars is the latest consolidation among EV brands since Tesla Inc.'s historic financial surge in the early 2020s. According to Reuters, a division of French advertising company Publicis Group SA and drug company Hikma Pharmaceuticals have reached separate settlements worth a collective $500 million to resolve claims that they helped fuel the deadly U.S. opioid epidemic. The settlements announced by U.S. state attorneys general on Thursday add to the more than $50 billion that drug manufacturers, distributors, pharmacy operators and consultants have agreed to pay to resolve lawsuits and investigations over their roles in the drug addiction crisis. According to Reuters, Poland has signed a deal to buy Lockheed Martin's MK-41 vertical launching system for three frigates it is building, Polish defense firm PGZ said on Thursday. 
The NATO member has been on a buying spree as it seeks to deter any possible attack after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. According to Bloomberg, the more the leadership at Julius Baer Group Limited looked at their exposure to Rene Benko's collapsed property empire, the worse the outlook for Chief Executive Officer Philip Rickenbacker became. In November, the Swiss bank put a modest amount of money, 70 million Swiss francs, aside for eventual losses against loans to the Cigna Group. Rickenbacker subsequently proclaimed the bank wouldn't be changing its appetite for risk. According to Reuters, climate software company Watershed has raised $100 million in a Series C funding round led by investment firm Green Oaks, valuing the company at $1.8 billion. Sequoia Capital, Kleiner Perkins, and Galvanize Climate Solutions also participated in the round, the company said on Thursday. According to Yahoo Finance, the U.S. housing market should experience a warm return this spring, thanks to calming economic data. The average rate for a 30-year loan declined to 6.63% from 6.69% the week prior, according to Freddie Mac on Thursday. Mortgage rates dropped for the second time in 2024 and are expected to retreat further as inflation moderates, which could help spark a housing rebound. According to Reuters, more than 80 Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives urged President Joe Biden to nominate two candidates to open seats on the U.S. Postal Board of Governors, adding the actions of current postal leaders are deeply concerning. The letter, led by Representative Jamie Raskin, the top Democrat on the committee overseeing the Postal Service, noted there have been five stamp price hikes since 2020 including the latest price hike on January 21 that boosted prices to 68 cents from 66 cents. According to Bloomberg, Lifestance Health Group Inc. is tumbling after Nate Anderson's Hindenburg Research released a report saying it's betting against the provider of mental health services. Shares of the Arizona-based firm fell as much as 21% on Thursday before pairing some of the loss to trade about 8% lower. The stock has declined nearly 30% this year. According to Yahoo Finance, Ferrari shares are charging higher today after the Italian luxury automaker reported Q4 sales results that topped expectations and that it sees momentum continuing in 2024. The Marinello-based automaker is also rumored to have signed Formula One seven-time champion Lewis Hamilton to its racing team, giving Ferrari fans even more reason to cheer. For the quarter, Ferrari reported revenue of 1.52 billion euros, topping estimates of 1.50 billion euros, as compiled by Bloomberg. Ferrari said its sales jumped 11% from a year ago. On the profitability front, Ferrari reported adjusted EBITDA of 558 million euros, slightly missing estimates of 560 million euros, $608. According to Bloomberg, Amer Sports Inc. stock rose as much as 6.2% above its U.S. initial public offering price after its first-time share sale priced below a marketed range. Shares in the maker of Wilson Tennis Rackets and Solomon Ski Boots were trading at $13.61 each as of 1.14 p.m. on Thursday in New York, above the IPO price of $13 each. The company raised $1.37 billion on Wednesday, with about 60% of the IPO sold to three members of the consortium that acquired the company in 2019, Bloomberg News has reported. According to Bloomberg, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey put the British Central Bank on a clear path to rate cuts. He also gave investors a few reasons to think the journey for policymakers in London may take longer than for those in Washington and Frankfurt. Turmoil in the Middle East, price pressures at home, the government's fiscal policy and even rising living standards each could reignite inflationary pressures and force the bow to keep rates at a 16-year high for longer than investors are betting, Bailey indicated in a Bloomberg TV interview Thursday. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields dropped to their lowest levels so far in 2024 on Thursday as renewed concerns about the regional banking sector and higher-than-expected jobless claims pushed investors toward safer assets. Yields dropped a day after the Federal Reserve's policy meeting in which Fed Chair Jerome Powell confirmed that interest rates had peaked for this cycle and would likely move lower in coming months as inflation continues to fall. In a widely expected move, the Fed kept benchmark interest rates unchanged. According to Reuters, 
U.S. worker productivity gains running well above the long-term average may help buttress the Federal Reserve's faith that inflation is contained and further open the door to interest rate cuts policymakers anticipate will start in coming months. Output per worker. A key gauge of how fast the economy can grow without rising inflation, increased 3.2% in the last quarter of 2023, the third quarter of productivity gains above 3% in a series that averaged about 1% from 2010 through 2019. According to Reuters, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem on Thursday said Prime Minister Justin Trudeau should avoid major spending increases in his next federal budget so they do not hinder the central bank's efforts to bring down stubborn inflation. According to Reuters, the Canadian dollar strengthened against its U.S. counterpart on Thursday, benefiting from a rebound in stocks one day after the Federal Reserve dashed hopes of an interest rate cut as soon as March. The loonie was trading 0.4% higher at 1.3375 to the greenback, or 74.77 US cents, after moving in a range of 1.3368 to 1.3464. According to Reuters, to get Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban to end his bloc on a 50 billion euro aid package for Ukraine, other European Union leaders teamed up ahead of a crunch summit to deliver a stark message, you're on your own this time. The veteran Hungarian leader, who maintains close ties to Moscow despite its invasion of Ukraine, has been adept in the past at finding enough support among his peers to drive a hard bargain in EU negotiations. According to Reuters, TikTok users will no longer be able to create videos with songs from Taylor Swift, John Batiste, Boy Genius and other Universal Music Group artists as the soundtrack, as contract negotiations between the two companies have collapsed. TikTok's access to Universal's expansive roster of artists ended Wednesday, after months of negotiations failed to yield a new agreement with the world's largest music company. Short videos featuring the label's artists will be muted over time. According to Reuters, Renault's decision to cancel the stock market flotation of its Ampere electric vehicle business will not delay investments into Ampere from Renault's partners Nissan and Mitsubishi, said Renault chairman Dominique Senard. Earlier this week, Renault ditched plans to list its electric vehicle business Ampere because of sluggish stock market conditions. According to Reuters, Elon Musk's plan to pull up stakes from Delaware and reincorporate Tesla in Texas may not give the electric carmaker's CEO the greater freedom he desires given the lack of history and different rules in that state's business courts, legal experts said. After suffering a bruising loss this week in Delaware's Chancery Court that voided his $56 billion pay package, Musk said on social media site X on Thursday that Tesla would move immediately to hold a shareholder vote to transfer state of incorporation to Texas. According to Bloomberg, big tech's struggle to meet lofty investor expectations this earnings season has taken air out of a record-breaking stock run. Pressure is now on Apple Inc. Amazon.com Inc. and Meta Platforms Inc. to come through on Thursday. The sector has led the SP500 lower this week after results from Microsoft Corp., Alphabet Inc., and Advanced Micro Devices Inc. were met with selling by traders. Investors had bid up the stocks to records on bets that artificial intelligence efforts are set to provide a big lift to profits and sales. According to Reuters, the first proper U.S. financial market tremors of 2024 have been felt and unsurprisingly, perhaps, commercial real estate is at the heart of the dislocation. Unsurprising, at least, to the thousands who descended on Miami this week for the investor conferences and meetings collectively termed, Hedge Fund Week, who put commercial real estate as perhaps the most scarlet of red flags for the year ahead. According to Bloomberg, Varde Partners plans to lean into private credit opportunities this year after the late 2023 rally in liquid markets. This shift leads us to apply a private credit approach to create transactions in the traded credit markets, such as new money solutions, club new issuance and private securitizations, according to an Outlook report from co-chief investment officers Ilfren Carstairs, Brad Bauer and Giuseppe Naglieri. Varde has about $13 billion in assets under management. According to Bloomberg, Formula One race car driver Lewis Hamilton will leave the Mercedes-AMG Petronas F1 team at the end of the 2024 season for Ferrari, according to announcements on Thursday from both teams. Hamilton will exercise a release option as part of his Mercedes contract announced last season. According to Bloomberg, 
Bond traders awaiting Wednesday's Federal Reserve rate decision were forced into a frenzy as news of troubles at a regional New York bank appended their carefully placed bets, leading to a stampede of short covering. The shock hit early in the day, when New York Community Bancorp reported a surprise loss and slashed its dividend while boosting its provision for loan losses. The news stoked renewed concern about the strength of the regional banking sector, prompting a rush by traders to unwind bearish positions in case further turmoil resulted in more aggressive Fed interest rate cuts than they were anticipating. According to Reuters, a sell-off in shares of U.S. regional banks continued on Thursday, adding to losses from a day earlier when a surprise loss and a 70% divided cut from New York Community Bancorp renewed fears about the health of the industry. The KBW Regional Banking Index fell 1.8% after seeing its biggest single-day decline since the collapse of Signature Bank in March last year. New York Community Bancorp was last down 8.4%. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. House of Representatives will vote on overturning the Biden administration's freeze on liquefied natural gas export approvals, a top Republican said Wednesday. The vote will take place the week after next. Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers, who chairs the House Energy and Commerce Committee, said during an interview. According to Yahoo Finance, Disney filed a notice of appeal on Thursday after a federal judge dismissed the company's free speech lawsuit against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis a day prior. In a court order issued Wednesday, U.S. District Judge Alan Windsor, who was appointed to the federal bench by former President Donald Trump in 2019, granted a motion to dismiss Disney's case. According to Reuters, Tesla opened its first South American store this week, displaying its sleek electric vehicles at an upscale mall in Chile's capital Santiago, as the automaker grapples with a slowdown in EV demand and the growth of Chinese rivals. Tesla has retail outlets in Mexico but had yet to expand into South America, according to its website. According to Bloomberg, Wall Street banks including J.P. Morgan Chase Company and Bank of America Corp are in talks to provide as much as $8 billion in financing for a buyout of DocuSign Inc. that values the company at around $13 billion, according to people with knowledge of the matter. Jefferies Financial Group Inc. and Deutsche Bank AG are also among the lenders considering a role in funding what would be the largest leveraged buyout of the year so far, according to the people, who asked not to be identified discussing the transaction. According to Bloomberg, a unit of Baiju's, once one of India's hottest tech startups, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in Delaware. Baiju's Alpha, a special purpose company formed for financing, sought court protection in Delaware on Thursday, court papers show. According to Reuters, a U.S. unit of Indian education technology startup Baiju's has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings in the U.S. Court of Delaware, listing liabilities in the range of $1 billion to $10 billion. Baiju's Alpha Unit listed its assets in the range of $500 million to $1 billion, according to a court filing. According to Reuters, changes made last week to a Federal Reserve lifeline for banks shouldn't impair the facility's ability to provide liquidity to banks that still genuinely need the cash, market analysts believe. That's because the facility, known as the Bank Term Funding Program, or BTFP, still offers fairly easy terms conditions to access it even as it now costs more to borrow from the central bank, the analyst said. That's important, since over recent days some regional Fed banks have run into challenges that have in turn stoked worries about the sector, thus raising questions whether the central bank was premature in tightening access to the BTFP. According to Bloomberg, the combative chief executive officer of Cleveland Cliffs Inc. who lambasted United States Steel Corp.'s decision to sell itself to a Japanese steelmaker said his company's offer is off the table. Laurenko Goncalves said that his $54 a share cash and stock bid for U.S. Steel is gone and won't be a backup if Nippon Steel Corp.'s $55 a share cash offer that was accepted by the iconic American steelmaker falls through. According to Reuters, Options volume on SPDRSP Regional Banking ETF surged for a second straight session on Thursday, spurred by bearish trading, as a sell-off in shares of U.S. regional banks continued after trouble at New York Community Bancorp. Cree shares fell 2% on Thursday while NYCB slipped 8%, extending its losses from Wednesday when the stock experienced a record single-day drop of 37.6% after announcing a surprise loss and a 70% divided cut.
According to Yahoo Finance, the January jobs report is set for release Friday morning and is expected to show some signs of cooling in the labor market, which proved more resilient than many expected throughout 2023. The monthly report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, slated for release at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, is expected to show non-farm payrolls rose by 185,000 in January while the unemployment rate ticked up to 3.8% from the previous month, according to consensus estimates compiled by Bloomberg. In December, the U.S. economy added 216,000 jobs while the unemployment unexpectedly remained flat at 3.7%. According to Reuters, Crypto lender Genesis Global has settled a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission lawsuit over its defunct Gemini Earn lending program, agreeing to a $21 million fine that will be paid only if Genesis is able to fully repay customers in its bankruptcy. The deal will help Genesis avoid the costs and risks of defending itself from an SEC lawsuit that had accused the company of illegally selling securities. The settlement will allow Genesis to focus on repaying customers and other creditors, according to documents filed in U.S. Bankruptcy Court in Manhattan on Wednesday evening. According to Reuters, a labor-backed coalition on Thursday filed a lawsuit seeking to block an industry-supported bid to ask Massachusetts voters to decide whether ride-share and delivery drivers for companies like Uber and Lyft should be treated as independent contractors rather than employees. A group of voters who count drivers and union leaders as members asked the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court to conclude that the five industry-backed proposals should not have been certified for inclusion on the November 2024 ballot. According to Reuters, International Monetary Fund Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva on Thursday said she anticipates that the Federal Reserve would begin to cut U.S. interest rates in a matter of months, but cautioned that there was a risk to the global economy of waiting too long to ease policy. Georgieva told reporters at IMF headquarters that she thinks the U.S. Central Bank made the right decision on Wednesday to hold rates steady but remain cautious on declaring victory against inflation. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks rebounded on Thursday as investors looked to a spate of high-profile earnings in the Friday's employment report the day after the Federal Reserve quashed lingering bets that interest rate cuts could begin as early as March. While a broad rally sent all three major U.S. stock indexes sharply higher, the tech-laden Nasdaq advanced the most, with results from Apple Inc., Amazon.com and Meta platforms due shortly. According to Yahoo Finance, with mortgage interest rates fluctuating daily, an excellent opportunity to refinance your existing loan may appear quickly and take you by surprise. Since the refinance process can take four to six weeks from start to finish, smart homeowners do the prep work ahead of time so they're ready to act whenever that opportunity presents itself. According to Reuters, Clorox raised its annual targets on Thursday, after handily beating quarterly earnings expectations, as the bleach maker replenished inventory at a faster pace after a production blip in 2023, putting it back on track to meet robust demand. The company's shares jumped about 8% in extended trading, after it said it was rebuilding retailer inventories ahead of schedule and recouping market share losses, bouncing back from a cyberattack in August that hampered its ability to fulfill orders. According to Reuters, internet firm Cloudflare said in a statement on Thursday that an advanced group of hackers tried to burrow deep into its global network late last year but were thwarted. The company, which did not identify the hackers, said in a blog post that it had discovered the intruders on Thanksgiving in late November and ejected them the following day. The spies were able to access some documentation in a limited amount of source code, but Cloudflare said the operational impact of the intrusion was extremely limited. According to Reuters, Camden Property Trust forecast annual funds from operation below Wall Street estimates on Thursday in a sign rental growth rates remain subdued in key markets such as Austin, Atlanta and Charlotte due to high supply. Rental supply across the United States remains elevated, with about 16% of Camden's portfolio in markets where it is outstripping demand, pushing rental growth rates down. According to Reuters, Apple on Thursday reported sales and profit that beat Wall Street estimates, powered by growth in its iPhone business. But China sales missed analysts' targets. The 2% rise in overall fiscal first quarter sales for the company ended four straight quarters of sales declines on the strength of its iPhone 15 lineup, which includes devices capable of capturing three-dimensional video for the Vision Pro headset being released this week.
Apple's total installed base of devices hit 2.2 billion, up from 2 billion a year ago. According to Yahoo Finance, Swedish automaker Volvo Cars has been on tear recently. Volvo, owned by China's Geely, reported deliveries surged in 2023 to 708,000 cars, resulting in 399.3 billion Swedish kroner in revenue, a 21% jump from a year ago. Profit also surged 43% in the year to 25.6 billion Swedish kroner, resulting in operating margin that grew to 6.4% from 5.4% a year ago. According to Reuters, global equity markets rebounded on Thursday on expectations that interest cuts by the Federal Reserve and other central banks were coming, though not as soon as hoped for, while Treasury yields slid again on concerns about regional U.S. banks. Fed Chair Jerome Powell on Wednesday pushed back on market speculation that rates would be cut in March, sparking a sell-off on Wall Street that lingered into Thursday until investors turned their focus to corporate earnings. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. Asian markets on Friday will look to take heart from Wall Street's bounce on Thursday, ending a rocky week on a steadier footing as investors digest the latest twists in the U.S. rate outlook. China's travails and Japan's solid start to the year. According to Bloomberg, billionaire activist Nelson Peltz has enshrined his pitch to Walt Disney Company investors to back his bid for a revamp of oversight and strategy at the media and entertainment giant. After months of public sparring with Disney, Peltz's tree and fund management on Thursday sent a long-awaited letter to other shareholders, in which it outlined its plans for improving performance at the California-based company. According to Reuters, changes last week to a Federal Reserve lifeline for banks should not impair the facility's ability to provide liquidity to banks that still genuinely need the cash, and also have appeared to deter a steady rise in borrowing over recent months, market analysts believe. That is because the facility, known as the Bank Term Funding Program, or BTFP, still offers fairly easy terms conditions to access it even as it now costs more to borrow from the central bank, the analyst said. That is important since over recent days some regional Fed banks have run into challenges that have in turn stoked worries about the sector, thus raising questions whether the central bank was premature in tightening access to the BTFP. According to Bloomberg, Auzora Bank Limited was in a bind in its home market. The Tokyo-based firm was tiny compared with the megabanks that dominate the nation's financial industry and lack the well-defined customer base of regional lenders. So about 10 years ago, it decided to expand aggressively overseas, to the point where nearly a third of its lending was outside Japan. According to Reuters, Manchester United striker Marcus Rashford scored the opening goal and Kabi Mainu netted a superb late winner as they beat Wolverhampton Wanderers 4-3 in a thrilling Premier League game at Molyneux on Thursday. Left out of United's 4-2 Cup win over Newport County by manager Eric Ten Hag, Rashford marked his return by rattling home the opening goal after five minutes against Wolves and he helped Luke Shaw tee up Rasmus Hoyland for the second in the 22nd minute. According to Bloomberg, Amazon.com Inc. reported strong sales and gave an operating income outlook that surpassed estimates, suggesting that Chief Executive Officer Andy Jassy's unrelenting cost-cutting and focus on services that make money is reshaping the once free spending company. The Seattle-based company turned in a blowout holiday season, posting the strongest online sales growth since the early days of the pandemic. The cloud computing division, meanwhile, has stabilized and executives say growth will accelerate this year as corporate customers resume their spending. Wall Street cheered, pushing the shares up about 8% in extended trading. According to Reuters, Meta Platforms and Amazon.com added a combined $280 billion in stock market value late on Thursday after the big tech duo reported quarterly results that impressed investors, while Apple's value shrank by $70 billion after its results. Meta's stock surged over 14% to a record high $451 after the bell, elevating its market capitalization by $148 billion to $1.16 trillion after the Facebook owner declared its first ever dividend. According to Bloomberg, lenders including Bain Capital and Sona Asset Management have agreed to take over a distressed Australian wine producer as part of a debt restructuring. The funds will get the keys to accolade wines from previous sponsor the Carlyle Group, by swapping their debt for shares in the company, the group announced Friday. The consortium, 
which calls itself Australian Wine Hulka Limited, comprises funds backed by Bain Capital Special Situations, Intermediate Capital Group, Capital 4, Sona Asset Management, and Samuel Terry Asset Management. According to Yahoo Finance, Apple CEO Tim Cook called out the company's AI investments on Thursday, adding that the tech giant will show off the fruits of those moves in the year ahead. The comment, which Cook made during Apple's Q1 earnings call, is the clearest signal yet that the company doesn't want to be perceived as missing out on Wall Street's favorite tech trend. According to Bloomberg, Apple Inc. reported a deepening slump in China during the holiday quarter, even as total iPhone sales were stronger than expected and the company returned to revenue growth. Sales in China dropped 13% to $20.8 billion in the fiscal first quarter, which ended December 30, the company said in a statement Thursday. That fell far short of the $23.5 billion predicted by analysts and was Apple's weakest December quarter in the Asian nation since the first period of 2020. According to Bloomberg, Japan's retail investors are pouring money into Indian stocks amid bets the nation will be the next China. Total assets of India equity-focused investment trusts in Japan grew 11%, are 237 billion yen, in January, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Factoring in the gains of Indian stocks on the yen basis last month, the figures suggest inflows of about 140 billion yen into India equity funds, while Japanese stock funds had almost no net inflows. According to Reuters, Eastman Chemical narrowly beat fourth-quarter profit estimates on Thursday, as the diversified chemical company benefited from cost-cutting measures. The company had last year disclosed plans to reduce manufacturing, supply chain and non-manufacturing costs by a total of $200 million, net of inflation, and the sale of its Texas City operations for $490 million. According to Reuters, a malaria vaccine developed by the University of Oxford in the Serum Institute of India prevented around three-quarters of symptomatic malaria cases in young children the first year after they got the shots, results from a large trial showed on Thursday. The vaccine, which has already been approved for use by regulators in three West African countries and the World Health Organization, is the second to become available this year. According to Reuters, Hawaii's Public Utilities Commission on Thursday approved Hawaiian Electric's $190 million climate adaptation plan, which will better prepare the island's electric grids for wildfires and severe weather conditions. The climate adaptation plan, submitted in June 2022 but only just approved, will help reduce the risk of wildfires and make Hawaii's power infrastructure more resilient, said Colton Ching, senior vice president of planning and technology of Hawaiian Electric, said in a statement. According to Reuters, a federal appeals court on Thursday threw out a $366.2 million verdict against FedEx, in a case brought by a black sales manager who said the package delivery company fired her in retaliation for accusing her supervisor of race discrimination. The Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals said the plaintiff, Jennifer Harris, was entitled to none of the $365 million of punitive damages that a Houston jury awarded her in October 2022. According to Reuters, Panama's ex-president Ricardo Martinelli is hoping to convince voters to give him a second chance in an election on May 5, but a decade-long prison sentence for money laundering could imperil his run. Martinelli's candidacy could implode if Panama's top court upholds a 128-month prison sentence for money laundering handed down last year for his role in a case known as New Business, which alleges public funds were used to buy a media conglomerate and give him a majority stake. His lawyers announced they would appeal the sentence in a press conference held hours after the ruling was published in July last year, denying that the former president had used public funds for the transaction. According to Bloomberg, Oil headed for the biggest weekly loss since early November as negotiations advance for an agreement to pause the Israel-Hamas war in what could be a crucial step toward ending the conflict. West Texas Intermediate rose above $74 a barrel on Friday, but was still down almost 5% for the week. Brent tumbled for a second session on Thursday. Talks on a ceasefire are still in the early stages and a breakthrough isn't expected in the coming days, people familiar with the matter said. According to Bloomberg, President Joe Biden is making no secret of his plans for multiple attacks on an Iran-backed group that killed three U.S. soldiers last week, a strategy that's exposed him to criticism he's giving up the element of surprise. The coming strikes were the talk of Washington on Thursday, 
four days after Biden warned that the U.S. would respond at a time and place of its choosing. Based on hints from the White House, the consensus emerged that the U.S. would attack Tehran-linked targets in Syria and Iraq but not hit Iranian territory. There was also speculation the U.S. would target an Iranian warship deployed in the Red Sea, the Iris Albers. According to Bloomberg, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will appear on CBS News' 60 Minutes this Sunday and will discuss inflation risks, expected rate cuts and the banking system, among other topics, the network said. CBS announced his appearance on the social media platform X on Thursday, the same day that the interview was conducted. Powell last appeared on the program in April 2021. According to Bloomberg, Meta Platforms Inc. Chief Executive Officer Mark Zuckerberg stands to receive a payout of about $700 million a year from the social media giant's first-ever dividend for investors. Meta announced a quarterly cash dividend of 50 cents a share for Class A and B common stock beginning in March. With Zuckerberg holding about 350 million shares, he would take home about $175 million in each quarterly payment before taxes, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. According to Bloomberg, Asian equity futures edged higher after U.S. stocks rose Thursday in a rebound that extended into after-hours trading on better-than-expected results from technology giants. Australian shares advanced, while contracts for Japanese and Hong Kong benchmarks also climbed. Futures for U.S. equities rose early in Asia after both the SP500 index and the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 index saw gains over over 1% in Wall Street trading. According to Reuters, Japan, America's closest ally in Asia, has been trying to send a message to U.S. presidential hopeful Donald Trump, don't try to strike any deal with China that could upend years of collective efforts to reign in Beijing and risk the region's fragile peace. Tokyo has stepped up attempts to engage with people close to Trump in recent weeks, as the 77-year-old's victories in Republican primaries in Iowa and New Hampshire have seen him emerge in some polls as the frontrunner in November's presidential election. According to Bloomberg, Japanese lender Aozora Bank Limited extended its losses on Friday, plummeting as much as 19% to the lowest since February 2021. The stock tumbled by its daily limit Thursday on losses tied to U.S. commercial property. Shares of the Tokyo-based bank tumbled Thursday for its biggest decline in 15 years, after the bank said it expects to post a net loss of 28 billion yen for the fiscal year, compared with its previous forecast for profit. Aozora made an additional reserve of 32.4 billion yen against bad loans related to U.S. office real estate. According to Bloomberg, a former Goldman Sachs Group Inc. executive is expanding assets of a fund that invests in undervalued Japanese companies from funeral parlors to daycare operators. With Japanese stocks at a 34-year high, investment lab company founder Naohide Un seeks to provide returns to investors at home and abroad with bets on smaller equities that are harder to reach as investment targets. According to Bloomberg, Top Biden administration officials are set to hold high-level meetings with Colombia counterparts in Bogotá next week amid increasing tensions with neighboring Venezuela. U.S. Principal Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer and the NSC's Senior Director for the Western Hemisphere Juan González will travel to, to Colombia's capital and hold meetings alongside Chief of Mission of the Venezuelan Affairs Unit Francisco Palmieri, according to people with knowledge of the matter, who asked not to be named because the discussions are confidential. According to Reuters, the dollar fell broadly on Friday in a bout of positive risk sentiment following upbeat big tech earnings on Wall Street, while traders awaited U.S. jobs data due later in the day to gauge how soon the Federal Reserve could begin easing rates. The closely watched non-farm payrolls report later on Friday comes on the heels of the Fed's latest policy meeting where rates were kept steady as expected, though Chair Jerome Powell pushed back against market expectations of rate cuts in March. According to Bloomberg, investors should take profits on five-year treasuries after the notes surged this week amid regional banking concern and data signaling the potential for a soft payrolls report on Friday, according to J.P. Morgan Chase Company analysts. The bank recently recommended buying five-year treasuries after yields jumped in January to a one-month high. With J.P. Morgan forecasting an upside surprise for January payrolls data on Friday, that makes it a good time for investors to sell the bonds now. Analysts including Jay Barry, the firm's co-head of U.S. rate strategy, wrote in a report Thursday.
According to Reuters, ExxonMobil Corp said in a court filing on Thursday activist investors were withdrawing a climate proposal the oil giant sought to block from being voted on during a shareholder meeting in May. Exxon filed a complaint in a Texas court earlier this month seeking to prevent activist investment firm Arjuna Capital and shareholder group follow this from seeking a vote on the climate proposal at the company's shareholder meeting in May. According to Bloomberg, Meta Platforms Inc. and Amazon.com Inc. spent 2023 cutting costs and refocusing their businesses. It was a strategy that upended the lives of displaced tech workers in Seattle and Silicon Valley, but appears to have paid off handsomely for investors who are likely to continue reaping benefits. Both companies reported better than expected earnings on Thursday, sending their stock prices soaring and validating the belt tightening strategies that defined the tech industry's past 16 months. According to Reuters, oil prices rose in early trade on Friday following a decision by OPEC Plus to keep its oil output policy unchanged, clawing back some losses from the previous trading session triggered by unsubstantiated ceasefire reports between Israel and Hamas. Brent crude futures rose 50 cents, or 0.6 percent, to $79.20 a barrel at 0155 GMT, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures gained 40 cents, or 0.5 percent, to $74.22 a barrel. According to Reuters, Asian shares were buoyed by a late bounce in U.S. tech on Friday as results from Meta and Amazon beat expectations, while investors are bracing for U.S. jobs figures, which could hasten bets for rate cuts if they come in below forecast. Both quarterly results from Meta Platforms and Amazon.com impressed investors, with their shares surging 15% and 7% in after-hour trading, respectively adding a combined $280 billion in stock market value on Thursday. Apple, however, fell 3% after the close on disappointing China sales. According to Bloomberg, merger and acquisition activity in India should grow this year as a wide array of companies attract capital from sovereign wealth funds, the Middle East and elsewhere, Citigroup Inc.'s top executive in the country said. Investments will range from outright acquisitions to greenfield projects and partnerships, Citi's India investment banking head Rahul Sarif said in an interview with Bloomberg News in Mumbai. There's likely to be an increase in dealmaking in industrials, manufacturing, information technology services and insurance, as well as some consolidation among shadow banks, he said. According to Bloomberg, NVIDIA Corp. Chief Executive Officer Jensen Huang said countries around the world aiming to build and run their own artificial intelligence infrastructure at home will drive up demand for his company's products. Nations including India, Japan, France and Canada are talking about the importance of investing in sovereign AI capabilities, Huang said in an interview Thursday with Bloomberg Television. Their natural resource, data, should be refined and produced for their country. The recognition of sovereign AI capabilities is global. According to Bloomberg, uranium miners extended a rally that's made them the best-performing Australian stocks this year after the world's biggest producer of the metal used to produce nuclear fuel cut its output target. Kazatomprom lowered its guidance for production for this year by 12% to 14%. The company, listed in London and controlled by the Kazakhstan government, had warned in January that it was likely to fall short of its output goals over the next two years. According to Reuters, Obesity and diabetes drug developer Fractal Health on Thursday priced its U.S. initial public offering below an indicated range to raise $110 million. The company, backed by investment firm Mithril Capital and venture capital firm General Catalyst, priced its offering of 7.3 million shares at $15 per share, below the indicated range of $16 to $18. According to Bloomberg, New York City subway and bus riders who skip paying fares are threatening the fiscal health of the nation's largest public transportation provider and its ability to improve service, the Transit Authority's chief executive said Wednesday. This is a fundamental, existential threat to our ability to provide first-class public transit and make it better, more frequent, more reliable, Jana Lieber said during the agency's monthly board meeting. And so we got to push back. According to Bloomberg, Fortescue Limited, the Australian iron ore miner seeking to become a green energy powerhouse, has seen the fifth departure from its management team in six months. Michael Gunner, a former Northern Territory chief minister, announced his resignation from the Perth-based company in a LinkedIn post Thursday. 
It comes just days after Deborah Cottle, the chief financial officer of the miner's energy arm, said she had left the firm created by billionaire Andrew Forrest. According to Bloomberg, Tencent Holdings Limited and Nexon companies surged after Chinese regulators approved their mobile DNF game, greenlighting a long-anticipated marquee title that had failed to pass regulatory muster for years. Tencent, which developed the title jointly with its Korean partner, gained as much as 5.9% Friday in Hong Kong, its most since July. Nexon traded limit up in Tokyo, set for a record daily of more than 20%. According to Bloomberg, X, the former Twitter, is urging advertisers to return, not long after owner Elon Musk shrugged off their disapproval of his platform. In a letter to current and former advertisers, Chief Executive Officer Linda Yaccarino said X is making a priority of keeping children safe online and supports a series of online safety bills proposed by U.S. lawmakers, seeking to draw a distinction from other social network leaders who are more circumspect on new regulation. According to Reuters, Indonesia President Joko Widodo said on Friday his cabinet was working normally, amid reports of discontent among his ministers. The cabinet has no problem, Jokowi, as the president is known, told reporters when asked about unease in the cabinet, adding it was normal and democratic to have differences of opinion. According to Bloomberg, Apple Inc.'s latest quarterly results triggered investor fears that the company is losing clout in China, a long-prized market that generates roughly a fifth of its sales. Revenue from the region plunged 13% last quarter, marking the worst decline since the 2018 holiday season. The drop was jarring enough to overshadow otherwise strong results, which included Apple's first overall sales growth in a year. According to Bloomberg, a former UBS Group AG banker is launching a new hedge fund in Hong Kong, betting on a revival of stock sales in Asia that have plunged to a decade low. Pascal Gutierrez said a European insurer is close to inking a multi-year deal to back his Viridian asset management with $150 million. He expects to start trading in December with as much as $400 million of capital and 12 employees, including Chief Operating Officer Arnaud Carcel, formerly of AXA Investment Managers.